Hey guys, I get this question all the time. You know, where do I start for home defense? So first thing is we're gonna determine your need and then I'll give you some options depending on what that is right after this. All right, today's video is brought to us by CCW Safe. Now, if you're gonna plan on using a gun to defend yourself or your loved ones, you have to plan on having that next fight. CCW Safe will provide legal protection for you in that case. Check them out in the description below. Now, I'd also like to thank our other sponsors. We have Vetter Holsters, Dry Fire Mag, and Laser Ammo. These companies are good, solid companies, and we use their products. Uh, you know, I wouldn't ever do that and, you know, advertise something that I don't personally use and approve of. And, but they help us bring this content to you free of charge. All right, let's get back to the video. Okay, so first thing you want to do is determine your need. Right? If you're going to be carrying this gun... All right, if you're planning on getting your CCW, we want to stay as legal as possible, guys. Um, you know, if, but if you're going to be carrying it with you, you're going to have to go pistol. Pistol can do double duty as a home defense gun as well. But if you're going to be carrying it, you want to have something small. Now, on the other end, is you got your AR platform. Um, now, this is a carbine. It could be anything, but honestly, um, ARs are all over the place now. And... Uh, they're one of the easiest I've found to teach. Um, there's very little recoil. If you put a red dot and a, uh, a flashlight on it uh, and a sling, you're gonna have a good home defense setup. And with the least amount of training you get, you become the most proficient with this particular setup, okay? Now, also, the people coming to invade your house are probably gonna be armed with handguns because they're concealable and they want to need to conceal them to get it to your house. So in a gunfight, you want to be the guy with the bigger gun. And honestly, here it is. Okay, so inside your house, this is a really good option. Now your third scenario, you want a shotgun. It's the most versatile. So if you can only have one gun and you're concerned with putting food on the table as well as defending yourself, um, Depending on your ammo, uh, you can shoot anything from deer and bear to uh, you know, doves and rabbits, okay, just by choosing your shot. Uh, now, you will have to get a different barrel, so the longer barrel is, is good for, for birds and rabbits. Shorter barrel, hunting in, you know, closer terrain uh, or defending yourself. Now, this one has a couple add-ons. It's got an extended uh, magazine tube, so you got more rounds may not be legal to hunt with in your area, but it the 870 is a really good gun for that because you can just change that out, put a plug in, whatever, all good. Now, you, flashlight and a red dot, all right? This is what's going to, you know, make this a good home defense gun, okay? We want a flashlight to ID your target, and the red dot is like, you put the red dot on them, squeeze the trigger, and that's pretty much where that uh, that pattern's going. So if your need is outside your home, okay, whatever you're doing, fill in the blank, right? If you need a firearm to protect yourself, it's going to be a pistol. Now, on this, you want to have decent sights, decent mag capacity, and a flashlight, okay? The flashlight is to positively ID your target, and that's, that's key here, right? This is a mid-size, and they, they make bigger pistols as well, but, you know, the biggest one that I'm going to carry, this is the biggest one I carry. You know, this is your SIG uh, 320 with a light. Got the stock X-ray uh, sights on it, um, and I think you can get a you know, 17 or 21 round magazines for this, or uh, 10 round if you live in a uh, restricted state. Now, you're going to shoot this more often. It's more comfortable to shoot. So it's good to have, 
you know, it's good range day gun. You can get out there and, you know, bust a lot of caps with this, get real comfortable with it. Okay. Uh, it's a bit bigger to carry, but again, you've got to decide what you want. Cause what you got here with your trade off, when you get your, this is a SIG 365. This is the same caliber. It's nine millimeter. It's very common. Um, you can get a lot of different uh, bullet types for it. Hollow points are probably what you want to be using, but I would say look to your local law enforcement or the FBI and use what they use. And in the unlikely event that you have to use this, that's going to be one less thing that the prosecuting attorney is going to have against you. Hey, if you're using what the cops used, you know, he goes, you know, killer bullets or no, you're using cop bullets. Okay. So, and it, they're good. It's a, a good caliber, um, to use on, uh, on threats. Okay. Um, now, it's a trade-off here. It's a smaller gun, so it's going to be easy to carry. It's lighter, but there's less grip space and it's going to be snappier. It just is because anything lighter, you've got the same amount of, uh, of force that's happening when the gun goes off. You just have less weight than this one to absorb it. Okay. So again, you're not going to train. Most people are not going to train as much with this gun here. Okay. Um, but everything here is a trade-off guys. And this one's going to be uh, easier to shoot, more fun to shoot usually. Um, but this one's going to be much easier to carry and more convenient. And the gun that's going to save your life is the one that you have on you. All right. So if this is Joel, you love this one, but you can't stand carrying it. You're not going to. So pick the one that you're going to carry. There's other options that you can put on here. Guys put red dots on and everything else, you know, that's later on. I would say get proficient with your iron sights, uh, get proficient in, you know, drawing from your concealed position, uh, and, and dealing with stoppages. And we have videos, uh, on all that stuff and you know, look us up. Okay. Now the AR platform, it's not an assault rifle. Okay, it's an armor light. That's the, the initial, uh, the, the, the guys who invented it were, was armor light back in the late 50s. Okay, this is 5.56 five, or 223. It's a common round. Uh, everybody talks about, oh my God, it's so powerful that, you know, he, no, honestly, in most states, you can't hunt deer with this thing because it's not powerful enough, all right, not to get a clean kill on a deer but it's really good for home defense. It has almost no recoil. In my experience, this is the easiest to teach. It takes the least amount of time to become basically proficient with this. I can take someone who's never touched a gun before and in about a half an hour, show them where the whistles and bells are and I can be printing, you know, fist size groups at 20 yards. You put the red dot on, you squeeze it, bang. And again, you're going to have the light and your red dot and a sling you know, for your, uh, for your home defense. Um, now, can you shoot coyotes with it and rabbits? Yeah, maybe you're going to tear up a rabbit though, but for pure home defense, this will get you there. Right. It's, it's the, the simplest to learn how to use. That's the key there. Okay. Now if you live someplace where you can go hunting all the time. Yeah, or you're concerned with uh, that scenario where you have to feed yourself then, and you can only have one gun, it's a shotgun, all right? Um, so this bad boy here is a uh, Remington 870 and got the, uh, uh, the choke stock on it, you know, pistol grip, a um, little vertical foregrip on there and a flashlight and a red dot, all this stuff. Yeah, it's set up for basically a home defense there. Right, but with almost no modifications, you can take this one, put it on there, and now I'm good for hunting birds and uh, rabbits and whatever else you need to put food on the table. Okay, um, rifled slugs work really good, buckshot works really good uh, to kill larger animals. Now, you know, the, the commonality here is that you want to have some sort of red dot, some sort of light. I don't have the, uh, the, uh, uh, sling on this one right now, but it's set up for a sling. 
Now, the reason you want a sling is because you want to be able to, uh, to, if you have to use both hands, you don't want to have to put the gun down in order to use two hands, all right? So, sling's kind of important. Uh, the red dot, the way you aim a shotgun is more pointing anyway, and you're just looking for this uh, that front sight. So, the last thing I would put on here would be the red dot. Okay. Now, so overall here, all uh, ammunition selection is going to be key. You can get varmint rounds, or frangible rounds, there's a lot of different choices. Again, look for what the police or the FBI uses and buy what they, you know, that's just going it, to, it'll be less of an issue post-shoot scenario, okay? Um, now, for the shotgun, you're going to have a variety of rounds anyway. Okay, you can have slugs, buckshot, birdshot. Choose the right thing. Now, a lot of people say, well, yeah, just use the shotgun because if you're using birdshot, it won't go, you know, through your wall into your kid's room. And that's wrong. Okay, anything, any round that these shoot, anything that will do lethal effect on a human target has enough energy to go right through drywall like it's not even there. Okay, so... Over penetration only counts once you've hit your target. So you shoot some an intruder with a rifled slug meant for deer, it's going to go right through them and have lethal energy on the other side. Okay, but maybe number four buckshot might be better. Right? You we want all that energy to be expended in the target, in the threat. Take them down. Okay. Hollow point, uh, you know, rounds for your nine mil or any pistol that you have, hollow point would be good. And then varmint rounds, frangible rounds, anything that the cops use. Because you want to be able to hit your target. That's the thing here. You need to practice enough with anything that you choose here so that you're comfortable. Okay? You're able to under duress, okay? High stress situation, because it's going to be a high stress situation. You need to be able to hit where you're shooting at. All right. Um, if anything, you buy one of these guns and then you take a class. And if that class includes some sort of force-on-force uh, -force training, probably a good idea. All right, you need to put yourself into that situation so you know how you're going to react in it. It all comes down to training no matter what you choose. You know, so number one, figure out what your need is. I don't know you. There's a bunch of different needs out there. So figure that one out. Decide which of these fits your particular niche and then train. Guys, everybody says train, train, train. Yet, you're only going to be as good as your worst rep, okay? Under, under stress, that's where you don't rise to the level of the occasion. No, you sink to the lowest level of your training. So, get on it and train. You can, uh, all the, the manipulation can be done dry fire. Um, but the, uh, you need to get on the range and you need to shoot the damn thing uh, and, and become proficient repetition is going to be your friend. All right. Hey, if you like this kind of content, like, subscribe, leave me a comment. You got a question about any of this? Hit me up in the comments.